A winner Alphabet. Google's reorganized holding company now controls 12% of all global media spend, mostly thanks to Google search and YouTube ad sales. In the US, that's $60 billion, or 166% of the revenue of the number two, the Walt Disney Company. Digital ad spend has grown 20% year on year for the last five years. While traditional ad spend is flat, Google is not complacent at number one. Last week, they announced that its search ad sizes are going to get bigger. The greatest concentration of IQ in history to build bigger ads. A winner tied. E-commerce is not lifting all boats. Online laundry detergent sales disproportionately benefit premium brands such as Tide and smaller eco-friendly brands. Due to savvy digital investments, Tide commands half of online laundry detergent sales almost double the share it enjoys offline. A portion of the success can be attributed to an early partnership with Amazon Dash. Today, Tide is the number one selling Dash button. A winner, the Pope of the digital generation. That's right, El Papa. In March, the Pope launched an Instagram account, dubbed Franciscus, garnering two and a half million followers, and of the 79 posts on the account, nearly all have 100K plus likes. Recently, Pope Francis met with YouTube stars and concluded that these YouTubers lay paths of virtual optimism and hope. We love this photo of the Pope. While the Pope has warned Catholics against putting their smartphones before real relationships, he's also promoted the internet as a gift from God and a force for good. Right on, Father. A loser, Gawker Media. Gawker saw a 16% year-on-year decline in traffic, which likely means its valuation has been cut by about 80 or 90%. So what went wrong? Facebook. Users are staying on Facebook for their news, and Facebook is now pay to play. It's reported that BuzzFeed pays millions of dollars to Facebook to boost performance. However, the real news this week, Nick Denton's press tour warning us that billionaires have too much influence over the media. Well, no shit, Einstein. Did you sleep through Murdoch's, Bezos, and Adelson's purchases of the Wall Street Journal, Washington Post, and Vegas Review Journal, respectively? People and organizations have been funding lawsuits for decades. I've been the subject of Gawker's form of journalism and have been referred to as, no joke, a jocular idiot, a self-important ass, and a douchebag. By the way, that is totally out of line. I am not jocular. Calling an outspoken professor a douchebag may be protected under the First Amendment. However, revealing the most intimate details of non-public figures' activities and ruining their lives in the process is not journalism, it's depravity. The legal shit-kicking Gawker is receiving is both warranted and overdue. We leave you with highlights of Terry Bollea's career, one, because Hulk Hogan is awesome, and two, we've been dying to cover a video with Justin Timberlake's What Goes Around, Comes Around. Yeah.